The Arizona Diamondbacks shocking the baseball world by beating Philadelphia in Philadelphia in games six and seven, winning last night four to two and punching their ticket for the World Series. Wilbon, there are stories on both sides of this game. Where do you want to start? Tony, with the winners, the team going to the World Series. And, and I, look, I, I know I said yesterday I'm rooting for Arizona, and I was. But, you know, it's not like the Cubs. It's not like it's so heartfelt. But I started to get a liking for the Arizona team based on the way they were playing. This notion that they'd won only 84 games all year. and Everybody kept asking them, are you surprised you're here? And they were like, no. And they had the answer of a team that became hot at the right time, like in any sport. And I like the way their bullpen played, and I like the way they were so clutch. And they've got, you know, young guys in that lineup coming through throughout this series, 22 and 23 years old. And it just all came together. And that's a cool thing about sports, and it's a cool thing about them. The Philly didn't do anything yeah. bad. I don't find the Phillies culpable. I don't want to fire anybody or cut anybody or do something bad to their team. Arizona beat them, and that's okay. Arizona deserves the win. I will sit here and tell you I'm not just surprised, I'm stunned, because as I said many times, I thought the home field advantage at Philadelphia was invulnerable. I had Buster Olney on my podcast this morning. I said, which surprised you more, Arizona winning or Texas winning? He said, oh, Arizona. He said, when teams win, they get in the locker room and somebody stands up and says, nobody believed in us, nobody thought we could do this except the guys in this room. And Buster said most of the time that's nonsense. But this time, nobody believed in them. Nobody really did yeah. think that they could do this. So, and, and they won it outright. Mike, I believe, I believe that the game last night was so telling. I mean, at one point, Arizona put in relievers the last five innings. There was only one hit off five different the relievers, bullpen. and that was in the fifth. So the yeah. Phillies had no hit six, seven, eight, nine. And the Phillies' big three mashers of Schwarber, and Turner and Harper, they were one Ooh. for 20 combined in the six and seven. It, it, in it was Philly. A, it was in indeed Philly. a total failure. It was, yes, it was a failure. It was a total well, failure. But they earned it. Arizona failure, earned I'm gonna it. Put, I'm gonna, but yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to give the credit to Arizona. Failure makes it sound like it was something Philly didn't do. And while that, yes, that literally may be the well, case, hit. I'm going to give credit to Arizona for shutting them down. Okay. They shut them down. They did. Good for them. They did. With 84 wins and with a negative run yeah. differential. Yeah. Negative. Going Second the time Series, in history. Baby. Them and the Minnesota Twins yeah. in 1987. Well, That's and it. that Twins team, the Twinkies in the Homer Dome, they that was it. crazy. They won all the games they at home. It. it was just the opposite yeah. of, so you say, the Texas-Houston Series. Let's move to last night's NBA openers. The Lakers talked a big game, but the Nuggets won it. With Nikola Jokic putting up his customary triple-double, and Denver fans chanting, who's your daddy? Later, the Suns got the win over the Warriors, with Devin Booker scoring 32 points while playing a lot of point guard late. Tony, which result was more intriguing to you? I don't even think there's a debate in this. It's the Nuggets beating the Lakers, beating them comfortably by 12 points after the Lakers had ran their yaps for a long period of time, saying they didn't like the way Denver celebrated after beating them last year. And they were pinning it on Michael Malone because somebody else said Michael Malone is the Lakers' daddy. Michael Malone didn't say it. Somebody else said it. But LeBron <laughs> James and Anthony Davis were saying, we want to take our revenge on them. This was going to be the great motivating factor. How did that work out? Well, apparently not so well. LeBron had a good game, played just 29 minutes. Anthony Davis... 34 minutes, 17 points in the first half. How many do you think he got in the second half? Time's up, zero. He got zero. Yeah. He didn't get any points at all in the second half. So, so what they did was they talked the talk and they could not walk the walk, the Lakers. Well, Tony, there was zero chance, zero, that the Lakers are going to beat Denver last night. And I know sometimes ring nights, the team getting the rings, receiving their rings, they get sort of emotional and they're not paying attention. We've seen a lot of great teams lose on ring nights. There was no chance the Lakers were winning that game. And, Tony, the, 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 the real important things there are LeBron and the sort of minutes restriction, which I applaud Darvin Ham for. He basically said, we're not playing LeBron 38 minutes to get a regular season win on a certain night. We're not doing that. And LeBron said, okay, I'll abide by the system. Good, he should. And Anthony Davis, as you point out, 
But I'm going to go to the other game, Tony, because there was intrigue in that. You have Chris Paul playing against the team he took for the finals in a rare situation. Phoenix playing in his new team, Golden State. And yet Devin Booker assuming Chris Paul's old role. And late in that game, when it was a one-point game, Devin Booker three times came down, drew a double team, and shot a pass to an open teammate for a bucket. Two threes and a layup by Nurkic. And people think, oh, they don't have a point guard. Well, maybe they do. Devin Booker is a great player. He's expanding. He's evolving. That was a more important development than anything that happened in the Lakers-Denver game because nothing was going to happen in that game because the Lakers can't beat Denver. They can be the mad tweeter of the Indianapolis Colts. Broke all the rules of secrecy by revealing on social media that the NFL, quote, admits and understands they did not make the correct calls at the end of... Let's start with this. We're going to start with Wilbon's new favorite crush, Victor Wembanyama. Wembanyama says he wants to play every single game. As an executive, the role you held for so long, would you be reluctant to do that? First of all, Wilbon picked a good... Good one to have a crush on. He's got good taste because <laughs> this guy is unbelievable. This Victor Wimbanyana will stop people in their tracks. I mean, what he does, even the most cynical fan or, or even somebody that doesn't know anything about basketball will watch this. He, the things he does, Tony, you just have never seen before. So, yes, I would be scared. And in a good way, though, because the most important thing for the next 10 years of the Spurs is the health, maybe 15 years of Victor Wembanyama, number one. There is, number two is way down below. So I would be worried. That's why you hire and pay a great director of sports performance. When I was with the Warriors, Rick Celebrini, no GM or coach is qualified to evaluate Victor, Victor Wembanyama's body health, how should he play, but you better hire somebody that can and trust that person because it is the most important thing. Because when we use the word unicorn, we should have saved it for this guy. It should have never been used until now because he's the one that looks like he's just different than everybody else. Tony's going to have to stop being a skeptic pretty soon, Bob. He's going to have to come around on this and get locked into the Win Banyama era. But let's go, oh, let's go from the sublime to the ridiculous. James Harden reported to practice today, but the team has asked him not to travel to Milwaukee for tomorrow's game. Don't come near that team playing. Uh, the Sixers opener, of course. If you were GMing that team right now, the Sixers, Bob, how would you handle this whole crazy Harden situation? Well, Michael, they've been talking about this trade for months, right? You have, Tony, everybody has. And it's not happening. It's not. It's, it's not today. It doesn't seem like tomorrow. There's no pressure to make a deal. And there's one team. It feels like one team. I don't know if you guys have mentioned any other team. I haven't heard one other team. And the team they're talking to, has offered what they're going to offer. So what Philly is doing now or trying to do is play for us. You're not getting traded. So if I'm the GM of that team, I say, listen, you asked to be traded. We tried. We don't like the deal. You may not like that reality, but that is the reality. You got to come play. And it's in the best interest for you to play. When you don't play, your value does not go up. And by the way, Harden was good for the Sixers last year. Ten and a half assists. He himself, if I'm counseling James, say, go play Get your value up. It's, it's only good for you. Not playing, not showing up, not good for him either. So that's the way I would approach it. But what do I? I don't know. I'm doing TV now. <laughs> you, you know better than we know. I would get his butt. I wouldn't let him get the plane either because he quit on his team last year in game six and seven. I wouldn't allow him to come anywhere near my team. But that's just me. We know I don't know. Now we're going to get our first look. At the Celtics tonight, Celtics here in New York against Knicks. Tony is more bullish on the changes they've made than I have been. You expect this whole thing to click, though, don't you, Bob? I do. I'm with, I'm with Tony. Not on the Wimbignana. He's wrong on that. He's, I, I'm with him on the Celtics. <laughs> I'm with you on Wimbignana. Um, look, I like it a lot. I like they, they are the most talented team in the league. The question, I think, for the Celtics is who's going to lead them? But I love the Drew Holiday acquisition because he's a leader. He's won a championship. He can help Tatum and Brown. He can show those guys how to do it. And he's not going to be the leader for the next five years of the Celtics. The question for the Celtics is, for me, Jason Tatum, MVP possible candidate, can he be the best player in a playoff series? Because that's what he's going to have to do for them to win a championship. He wasn't better than Jimmy Butler 
in the playoffs. He sometimes hasn't been better than Giannis at a Cuba. That's no knock on Jason Tatum. But usually in a playoff series, 2022, Steph Curry was the best player in that playoff series. And usually the best player in the series wins the series. Tatum has the talent to do it. He's just got to do it. But look, it helps when you walk back to the huddle and Holiday goes, hey, you, you shoot the ball. Let me help you. Where do you want it? That confidence from a champion is only going to help the Celtics. So I really like that team. Will, when I don't know why you don't. I guess we can talk about that off, offline if you want. <laughs> Will Vaughn doesn't that like that team because they don't play in Chicago. It's pretty simple. <laughs> oh, stop, if they played in Chicago, stop. he would love I the like team. I like the Suns. We'll get you they out don't of here play in Chicago. This. Is your geography off? You live there, too. You have a house there, too. <laughs> you have houses all I'm over. I'm in Washington. I don't right, like we'll the Wizards. get you out of here on this. When you watch last night, when you watch the Warriors, and they opened last night, did any part of you – internally say, I want to be back there. Look, I have friends, friends there, not work friends, friends. So I, I want them to do well. And if people don't want to hear that, I'm sorry. But I was there 12 years and had a tremendous time and, and root for them still. But Tony, no, I was not. No, if I, I and I'm happy because it was a real test for me, to be honest, to watch that and say, do I have any fear of missing out? Uh, do I wish I was there? I, I didn't. I, I just didn't. But I was clear in that, and that wasn't something I was really wondering. Doesn't mean I didn't have a great time. Doesn't mean I have a problem with anything there. It just means that that was a time in my life that I did the best I could. But like I said when I left, I didn't have anything left. You know, if we were playing pickup, I use this example, and you guys go, let's play one more game. I can love basketball and tell you guys, I can't play. I'm out. I'm tired. I'm done. You guys go play, and then you'd beg me to play. One more, Bob. Play one more. And then I'd play, and you go, what's wrong with you? You're not boxing out your guy? You're not even trying? I said, I told you guys I was done. I can't play anymore. Doesn't mean I don't love it. Doesn't mean I don't root for those guys. But what it requires, I didn't have. And I'm, I'm man enough to admit that. Do I get that back? I don't know, but I know I don't have it right now. And when you're in that job, you have to bring that. You have to, or at least I did. That's the only way I knew how to do it. I couldn't do it halfway. Some people maybe can. I don't know. But that's how I felt watching, watching last night. Thank you for being on. It was very good. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate that, Bob. Yeah. Tony's yeah. got great FOMO. He's got FOMO all the time. He doesn't understand what you're saying. He's got FOMO on everything. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. You can see more of Bob <laughs> and Will Bond on NBA Countdown at 6 p.m. on this That's very right. channel. A Short one last break to come. Could Craig Council be the second manager to switch teams this week? Tony, we're going to magically appear in the garden in a few seconds, too. You're going to freak out over that. What should we expect out of Chet Holmgren in his debut for the Thunder tonight? I would freak out if I actually turned it on. But I've seen you so much in my life that I'm not going to turn it on. <laughs> maybe later. Maybe around a quarter to seven. Then I'll turn it. I think Dave Cowens. The Hall of Fame center went to the Celtics out of Florida State in the 1970 draft. Cowens was the fourth overall pick. The top three in this great draft class, Bob Lanier, Rudy Tomjanovich, Pete Maravich. Cowens ended up with the Rookie of the Year in the most rings, too. 1974 Celtics that won the championship, Cowens, Jojo White, John Havlicek, Paul Silas, Don Nelson, and Don Chaney. Pretty good, huh? Cowens averaged 17.3 points and 13.6 rebounds over his career. In his MVP year in 1973, Cowens averaged 20.5 points and 16.2 rebounds. At 6'9", Cowens was undersized at center, but his great jumping ability enabled him to be a fabulous rebounder. I love that we're talking about Dave Cowens and his birthday, Tony, because he's forgotten, too forgotten, maybe the most forgotten guy in modern basketball history. It doesn't go Russell Havlicek, you know, Bird, you know, big three. No, no, it doesn't. Dave Cowens was a great player in there for those two championships. People know who he is. Not so happy anniversary to Jim Marshall. On this day 59 years ago, the Minnesota Vikings defensive stalwart recovered a 49ers fumble and ran the wrong way 66 yards for what he thought was a touchdown, but turned out to be a safety for the 49ers that earned him the nickname of Wrong Way Marshall. Marshall once held the NFL record for recovered fumbles 30, and despite his error against San Francisco, it was Marshall forcing a late fumble that sealed the game for the Vikings 27-22. 
Marshall now 85, still holds or is tied for the NFL record for most seasons played by a defensive player, 20. And most consecutive games started by a defensive player, 282. Marshall was the longest tenured member of the famed Purple People Eaters. Marshall, Larson, Eller, and Page. I got to watch that a lot when you grew up a Bears fan, watching the Vikings, Tony, with all due respect to the Steel Curtain. Purple People Eaters might have been as good as a unit. And by the way, though, Walter Payton gashed them for 275 yards, did a league record one year. I think it was 1977. Happy trails to the opening for Red Sox head of baseball operations. Former Major League reliever Craig Breslow, 43, will take over running the Red Sox. Breslow pitched five seasons in Boston in his 12-year career. He was on the Red Sox 2013 World Champions. Breslow had been serving as the Cubs assistant general manager and vice president of pitching. He's been credited with helping develop pitchers from the Cubs farm system, something Boston wants from its farm system. Breslow attended Yale, as did his immediate predecessor, Chaim Bloom, who was fired in September, and also the legendary Red Sox GM, Theo Epstein, who was said to look favorably on Breslow. They worked together on the Cubs. The Theo tree, pretty amazing, isn't it? Keeps giving. Yeah. Uh, let's go quick to the big finish if we can. Deshaun Watson let's is out. P.J. Walker will start for the Browns in Seattle. Your thoughts? They've played okay with P.J. Walker. It's the defense that really fuels that team. They can win without Watson. Niners quarterback Brock Purdy, concussion protocol. Is that a big deal? Very big deal. He's unlikely to play. So you're looking at Sam Darnold. Brewers manager Craig Council will interview with the Mets. Is that a good fit? I, you know, you get booed a lot more in New York than you do in Milwaukee, don't you? Zipper set of expectations, Sean Casey will not return as Yankees hitting coach. You surprised? I'm not surprised. It's all about Aaron Judge. When he plays, everybody hits. When he doesn't, nobody hits. Last one. What do you yeah. expect from Chet Holmgren's debut against the Bulls tonight? Oklahoma City's going to be real good, Tom. How about 14, 10, and three block shots? Holmgren's going to be, he's going to give Wim Banyama a little chase, maybe, for rookie of the year. We're out of time. We'll try and do better the next time.